The New Patriotic Party says it will break the eight, something that the APC is trying to do in Nigeria. But before you break the eight, you need a flag bearer to lead you into that contest. Nana Rodan Kwakufado has done his bit, having served for two terms. The next job is to get a flag bearer for the NPP ahead of the elections. We've seen so many people, at least nine people, saying that they want to run for that particular office. But when it comes to it, is it going to be truly a two-horse race? And if that's the case, who are these two horses? And who is backing who? In the House of Parliament, how is the NPP doing? There's a campaign to remove the party's finance minister. All this and more on the Face to Face today. My name is Umar Usanda Amadou. You're welcome. of Parliament from the heart of Kumasi, a constituency known as Subin, the Honorable Eugene Bwachi Entry. You're welcome to Face to Face. Thank you, Mario. How are you? Well, I'm happy. I didn't know Subin was in the heart of Kumasi very, until... Very, very I hear like you are the main... How, how is... The I see. How is, how is, how is, the, how is the constituency doing? Well, I good. I mean, all I can say is that uh, uh, there's a few chaotic moments regards to the state of the economy and all of you, because Subin, by and large, is a commercial hub of a city. It houses the central market, okay. it houses the south market, it houses the Amnagio market, it houses the uh, market. So you, you, for, you border Swami? No. Or you don't? This and the, uh, more peri-urban. Okay. Subin shares a border with Mesha South, Bantima, and Shaisu. And so you are like Anodo Dio Dio. I would say I'm like I'm like Paris. Okay. France, <laughs> okay. But how easy would it be representing a constituency like because you are urban? People will not complain people will not complain about roads. Because right. the roads are part of the grand government agenda. So urban road. Good. So what what do you really that, do for the people? Yes that yes, it's, it's a commercial hub. So people complain here and there. Fire outbreaks, but it does okay. You have to try and you know help them out. Small, small loans to keep their businesses going. And in the wake of the pandemic, there were other other issues also arising out of you know loss of capital. But what do you campaign on? In rural constituency, they campaign over roads, they campaign over health posts, they complain campaign about water. No, what what do you campaign about? What? I, think, I think the uh, elections of Ghana. As we all come to appreciate, is fought on two fronts: how the economy is doing and how corruption is being tackled. Okay. Right. Okay. That's the two issues is reduced to. Yes. From my from from my standpoint. Okay. In 2016, we won because the economy was in a bad shape. The corruption was. And Arudan Bukufuaro also became the apostle of anti-corruption, and that sort of fed into the system. And Yanni has felt that let's, let's give them hope to come and mm -hmm. you know, turn the fortunes mm -hmm. of the country around. He would deal with corruption and what have you. It led to the creation of the Office of the Special Prosecutor and what have you. The taxes of planning the Ghanaian taxpayer. You were deputy minister for works and housing. Works is generally an urban issue, so drains and all of those. Sanitation used to be part of the ministry, and then it, they hived it up. How have you done personally in your conditions in dealing with works and housing issues? Works issues more specifically. Well, my my, my, my is that have housing issues. Okay, works works issues. Works issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether you know I don't. Okay, so from the sports stadium. The junction where the sports stadium or the, 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 um, the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Growing up in Kumasi in those days, there was a, a video showing place there called uh, the Trump. So, video center. The video center. Behind it, it was a huge train from there all the way to the Catholic Church and beyond heading towards Kamonga. 
I think when I went for ministry, thankfully, at the time, the president gave us, to the farmers that gave us a huge budget. I think it was um, around the region of 200 million Ghana cities. So that project was one of the first projects that I, I was able to do, okay. to construct a major drain to give the place a facelift. Okay. There was also a hub around there where people used to do all manner of vices. We have not been converted into a shopping center. And on the other side of uh, the EP church was also a similar problem. Just by behind the wall of the St. Paul's Catholic Church, that too has been constructed. And other, other, I would say, minor, mm. minor trade. But that, this one was a key one. Your, municipal, your, your, your local assembly is KME? Yes. Okay, so the issue of um, law and order, the chaos in there, do they consult you in terms of planning your constituency? No, uh, every, every MP we came in myself, or my goal, as I said, watch it, or my goal, my mother, 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 my Very confused because if you compare the way we plan in this country, sometimes you get worried. We allow the technical people to do their work or we interfere as politicians. For example, I mean, if you live in the UK or the Americas, if you hear of a superstore and it's been built out of town, mm -hmm. say a Dodua or say a Fafra, mm -hmm. where a new town is created, yeah. people move in there and the world which is created, infrastructure. So you. something like the West Hills Mall, the location makes sense. Mm -hmm. outside of the capital. Mm -hmm. But, so being, for various reasons, has become a trading place that everybody wants to sell. And the other markets are in Kumase, outside of Subin. There's that Tozu market, there's a cruise room, a Tozu market is in Asuka, cruise room is in Mesha, North, what have you. But people will still prefer to come to the city center and sell. So when it comes to uh, human traffic, that it, it also in a way <laughs> translates into chaos mm -hmm. and disorderliness mm -hmm. and all that you. Mm -hmm. But nobody want to sell on the pavements. They want to sell on the streets. And because you politicians won't vote, you can't sack them from the pavements. No, it's only two people who can do that. <laughs> Why? It, oh, so that's how it works? Uh, yeah, it's only a, a, a because yes, you know, they have to face electric. Okay, okay, so you mean he, he, he can do it with his eyes yes, closed and yes. he does Okay, okay, but yes. not a mayor, even a mayor may be able to. You'll be affected. Yeah. You saw what happened to uh, Mayor Vanderpoint. Okay, Africa. yes, 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 yes. So, it, MP, how dare you? Yes, because these people are and, your constituents. And we can't get out of that problem, can we? It's, it's a, I think we have to find a way of getting people to build outside the built up areas. Mm, mm, mm. There's no point trying to build in Sumi or Malaysia, Bantama. These are areas. So there's nothing to add? Nothing to add. Before I move away from your old ministry, the Ministry of Works and Housing, um, anytime I'm driving to Aflao or Adan, I see the Saglemi housing project on my left, and my heart bleeds. You were there with Honorable Atachia. You people came in just to utilize what Mahama has built, and also Adani Asem. Why? <laughs> Search me. There's nothing on you? Search me, I mean... I think it's a, it's a sad indictment on the ministry that such a project. Well, we went there in 2017 myself with Honorable Tachi and then Honorable Frida Prempe, who was also a deputy. Yeah, colleague deputy. She was actually in charge of housing. Okay. So we went there and the place was in a fantastic shape. All what was placed at the time, I believe, uh, we were told by the technocrats the construction of drains and what have you. But in terms of the building itself, perfect. Perfect, you know, like I told them to like the word, the, the, the social housing have been set in Germany some time back, you know, perfect. Why we've left it to be in a state that it is now. To rot. It's unfortunate. You think it could have been utilized? Because your government no, has... I, so I know it could have been utilized. Your government thinks there are a lot of issues that have to be dressed up before anything else can happen. Hey, those issues can be dressed up, but that should not prevent us from moving on with the project. The project has been put or constructed 
or the taxpayers money. Those are about 200 million dollars. Mm -hmm. So if, if there's criminality involved, yes, we can deal with the criminality. That's what the courts are there for. But then it really incumbent upon us, the government, to try and bring it to its proper use for the citizenry. You know there were the accommodation issues in Accra, where they wouldn't even have somewhere to sleep. And we let this place to the last time I saw it on television. It was painful to see. <laughs> Surprise you. It does not. But it shouldn't be the case. It shouldn't be the case. What's, what's, what's stopping it, though? Beyond the prosecution of um, the former minister for the sector, which is happening in the courts, government side administrative issues, what is stopping that project from... I mean, the last time, I think there's a group that went there, they said they wanted to push people to go and occupy the place and all of that. What should happen and what is not happening? What should have happened was that right after taking over in 2017, when we, I think we visited the site two months after I joined the ministry. And like I'm saying, what I saw, the place was hospitable, uh, hospitable the place was ready for occupation. I mean, then we were told that we have to do it. was going to be living in mm -hmm. the apartment, the units without toilets yeah. and water, what yeah. have you. That was what was astounding at the time. And other, other uh, units that were coming up, you know, further, and back. further down. Mm -hmm. But I don't know why we couldn't tackle the brain, the very dirty aspect in those completed ones and get people moving there, get the proceeds to them, you know, continue the, the rest. Mm -hmm. And I think it goes into if I had received the cabinet and permit approval, that loan, we would have then come up to Parliament for additional money to do the further work. To finish it That's up. That's why all that didn't happen. You see, I'm not absolving the previous ministers from the so-called criminality. It's alleged, mm -hmm. but they're still in court, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to it. But I also view that you could have gone on side by side, seek the completion of the thousand units, try and make as much as you can from there to continue the other works. And then let the court process also take its course. Your colleague is now the minister for that sector. Both you and your former boss have been booted out. <laughs> what would you say to Asen Subachi if he's watching you now? But, uh, it, 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 I don't think it's a straightforward matter for him. Money. Right? And that's why I'm saying that the advice at the time from a technocrat in the ministry was to go out there and you see for your initial funding, right? And we would have probably have received at a time mm. and then complete mm. those, I would say, the almost completed ones mm. and, you know, rent those out okay. or sell the ones that you could sell okay. and then raise money to continue that award. Okay. That did not happen. And I'm feeling 37 to now is success. Yes. It's, so more, it's more than extent, that, again. And the extent mm. of the damage, the extent of the losses, the extent the it's getting worse, which means that your government could even also be held in, in the future that you also sat and watch for the thing to rot further. No, 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 so that's what another one. <laughs> this is face to face on City TV. My name is Omaru Sandam, and my guest is Honorable Eugene Bwachinchi, former Deputy Minister for Works and Housing. He's MP for Subin. When I started a conversation with you and asked you about the issues at stake in, in elections, you settled, you brought them down to two. You said economy, corruption. At the time, you said Ghanaians believed that Akufado was the man who was going to save us out of the corruption allegations against John Mahama. Do you think you have done well or you have failed Ghanaians six years ago? It's a story yet to be told. What's your, we'll what's going, your thinking? We'll be going before the electorate in 2024. So Ghanaians will pass a verdict or will make it their own determination whether we've passed through two critical tests successfully and to their satisfaction. That's not for me to say. As from what I'm saying, I think we've done well in terms of this success stories, which we are not, we are not telling, mm. because there's always some kind of a bad news emerging from somewhere which detracts from, you know, the success stories. But in terms of first I can assure you, the group for the government hasn't done badly at all. Mm. But in terms of corruption, you have done badly. I said that. Will be the you, want to, you want to leave it for the electorates to decide? Yes, it's not for me to, to tell. Okay, yes. because it's not tangible. It's not something you can see.
you can feel it, you can sense it, but it's not physical, you can't point to it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but let's talk about the one that you can feel in your pocket and the people of Sudan yeah, are feeling the, 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 the economy. economy mm. In terms of the economy, I think, I will say that I'm proud of the economic factors in the ministry. And I've said it time and over. Is this the latter part of the last six years or from day one? You you have issues or difficulties well, because you passed them. You yes, were celebrated. Yes. I mean, first and foremost, there's a key saying that there may be a good meaning. He's done his bit. He met an IMF economy in 2017. He did his bit to win us of IMF in 2019. Right? Those two years were for well, those best two years out of the six. 2017, 2018. 2018, 2017, because mm, mm. so we're not a problem. 2018, 2019. Very restricted. But even in 2018, at the time, Works and Housing got an allocation of 200 million for drains. That was an achievement. 2020, 250 million. That was an achievement. But the pronouncement of Kenofrata himself. On this time at the back here, has not helped him. Is it not politics and is normal allowed? No. You see, every politician must live or die by your word. That is my belief. And English one's word is his bond. Once you say something, you are committed to it. You see, when you are in government, you don't have a luxury of trying to error or speaking without, you know, you know Accounts. You know the facts, so you speak to them. We were here, 2021, when all the signs were that the economy was going to go into crisis. Then the finance minister came to meet the majority of us here and assured us that, look, IMF was the good thing, which we all agree. This was what, 2020? 2021. Okay. IMF wasn't a good thing. So he rather wants us to raise money internally, right, so that we don't have, we don't have to go to IMF. At the time, they brought two policies. That's the e-levy, electronic levy, right, which was projected to raise 300 million cities for them every month. That's a big substitute. And then the property rate. So these revenue streams was what Infrata was relying on. Domestic. Yes. So that we don't have to go, we don't have to, go to IMF. And, and, and it made sense to you? Of course. On paper, yes. On paper. It made sense to us on paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The practicality of it is something else. Yeah. And you saw how we fought our NBC guys in the chamber. To ensure that E-Levy goes through. Yes. Some, of our, some of my colleagues got injured. Because you knew that that's what is going to save the economy. And we have absolute faith in that, in that. We pushed it, got it passed. Only to be told a few months down the line that uh, uh, the projected revenue of 300 million, we only realized 30 million, that's 10%. That was disappointing. The property rate in 2022 had not been introduced. We are now about to introduce it now. So that clearly was a situation of two clear policy failures. Both have collapsed. Yes. And the back stops with him. Why not say that the E levy's faults or problems, the back stops with the minority side? And that beyond fighting in parliament, they also went to town and campaigned and told people not to subscribe. So you can't blame Ken on that. No. You see, I think before all the passage of the E levy, Honorable Harun Advocated for 1%, yeah. instead of 1.5. Yeah, started from 0 0.5 and even went to 1%. Let everybody pay. We are building a nation. <laughs> so every Ghanaian ought to pay. We want roads, we want hospitals, we want this, we want that. So if you want all these things, you pay. Because we want to go to Europe and America, they all pay taxes to ensure that zero development comes about. Fine. And Haruna, even Haruna Ekusu at the time, had gone to a meeting with the telcos at a Marriott Hotel. And even came out of that meeting and spoke in favor of the one percent. And got roasted by his NDC friends. But Kamu Vlata insisted on the one point five. 
We say, okay, we say to ourselves, very well, maybe he's done the figures. So once he's done the figures and is still insisting or stridently advocating for the 1%, we we'll support him. So we supported him. We got it passed. The rest is history. Then, to maybe make matters worse, when he openly told the whole nation and the whole world, by extension, that we are strong, we are a proud nation. We don't go to IMF. We have the resources, we have the capacity. We will go to IMF today, we will go to IMF tomorrow. Are you sure you are not quoting John Kuma? No, this is, this is the, these are the words of Ken Freyata. Yes. So you see, his own posturing, his own pronouncements. These IMF guys are like spies. They are everywhere. They have a rep here. They have a rep in other countries. And they were listening to you. So having more or less bastardized the institution, in all honesty, were we expecting the president to lead the IMF negotiation? And the answer is absolutely no. Let me come back. We'll talk about this more. This is face to face on City TV. My guest, the Honorable Eugene Boachinchu, he's one of several MPs, over 90, who have been demanding that Ken Operata be removed by the president as Minister of Finance. They went to have a meeting in the big house and they came out telling us that the president has given them some promises. But we're still tracing the genesis of the issue because he believes that the economy is critical, corruption is critical. The economy side things are not looking good. He is still of the view that Ken must go. But will he stay with us? It's City on the Go. You don't have to miss any of your favorite television and radio shows on City TV and City FM. Enjoy thrilling content from your world of great television and relevant radio at your convenience. Subscribe to CityTube on YouTube, turn on your notification button and receive prompts on our live streaming sessions and new content uploads. For easy access to the CityTube page, scan the QR code on your screens, subscribe to the CityTube page and voila! Unlimited content awaits you. Don't forget to subscribe to City Two for amazing content from City TV and City FM. You're welcome back. This is Face to Face on City TV. My name is Omar Sandam. I'm here with Honorable Eugene Bachin and we're discussing the economy. We'll talk about the MPP internal politics. Uh, later on. The issue of the economy. So he made a pronouncement. He said we are a proud nation. It's true. We have the resources. This is also true. We will not go back to IMF. That's also true. That's actually been the hope of the NPP when you did the KNK party in 2018 when we came out of IMF. You can't blame him. It's a government machine. He's just one person in there. Why are you blaming him? You see, yes, the backs of the president. But the president appoints ministers, and these ministers are like advisors to the president, you understand? So if you bring something to me, and you convince me, because that's okay. the president didn't come here to address us, so. you know, the finance minister who came and met the majority MP side to convince us to support him. So that means that all the figures have been put together, and there wasn't anything cobbled up to come and deceive anybody. Right? That is why some of us went out there openly supporting it. It was like government policy. Mm -hmm. Then if a few months down the line, we are told that the figures were not adding up. Really? Can we blame the press? I can we blame the press? You should trust him that he can fix it. In fact, the first term of the Akufado government, we know that the figures were looking good in terms of statistics. And he also blames COVID-19. So why are you putting the problems of COVID-19 on Ken head? You see, they say that the reason we are going back to IMF is COVID-19. You sit in Accra and the House of Parliament and talk about COVID-19 and Ukraine and what have you. Go to the central market in Akonsuas and try to talk about COVID-19. Yes. It will make sense. <laughs> the colleague was telling me that during the Mahama era, 
once uh, was it in Tekwe used to come to the cabinet and talk about inflation, mm. said, look, we don't eat inflation in Astar Ahafu. It's in Afro South. It's in Afro South. No, it's with TV South. South. Mm. We will vote. And we vote based on the conditions. Right? So, I mean, really and truly, I believe that even if he was against the IMF, you should, not, you should not have made those public pronouncements. But the, that's how I believe that we are being punished by the institution. Deliberately? Yes. We don't think the reform of society even, even doesn't believe in us. Why is he here negotiating with us? So, would you understand the psyche of these white guys or with these institutions? You have to understand them. So, in, on the part of principle, he shouldn't lead it. Yes, because you see, would he have you made against a certain decision? Would it have been better if he remained finance minister, but someone else was sent to go and negotiate? I'm told during Muhammad's era, even though Setekwe was a minister of finance. Uh, the late uh, Professor Bochy was a key guy who was dealing with the IMF. Could something like that work? No, but MPP, uh, our man tries to help the men. So, Kenofata is the only place who can go and negotiate. Yes. What is so special about Kenofata that any of any, them any marry and be my mother? What we do with the very grassroots of, the, of, of this country? He quotes the Bible. You cannot quote the Bible. Well, I'm very cautious about quoting the Bible. <laughs> but if I quote it, I, I can't practice or, you know, I, 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 I will be practicing. What's the point? The point is that when I go to Sudan and I'm dealing with my delegates, I see poverty. I see hardship. And you blame all of this on Ken? It's the economy. Who do I blame it on? If the economy is good... There's an economic management team. He's just a member well, of it. You can decide to play with semantics. That is fine. Ken Ufrata is the finance minister of Ghana. The economic management team is an advisory group to cabinet, and to a president. Yes. It's advisory. It's like IPAC. We advise. It's how you have to take to take That's whether they take or not. Right? But I believe that when you approach... I want you to meet members and say, look, I believe that A, B, C, D, I've done the figures, blah, blah, blah. And there's something that's been coupled up. Then why not? The Should group be where we are. The group of MPs that was opposed to him, is that group still there? Do you still oppose the minister? Is still I'm just saying, but if that individual group came, I became a group, a single group, and you insisted, and you even went to meet the no, president. Then later on, after the meeting with the president, it became the became whole caucus. The majority decision. Does the whole majority size still believe that Ken I must go? For I can speak for myself. You can watch it. And those who As you know, parliament for mm -hmm. amongst the 138 members of parliament in the in on the majority side, mm -hmm. I can't speak for everybody, but I know in my conversation with people, with colleague MPs, that. <laughs> the campaign is still on. Of course. You still want Ken out. Of course. Why is he still there? You met the president. He well, gave you an assurance. That assurance is yet to expire. Yes. So that you can you can't even be talking about why, this now. That is why we are patiently waiting. Because the president said he deal with IMF. When the minister came here last week or the week before, he told the whole nation when he came to uh Explain to uh, Parliament about the, the uh, domestic the, debt. Yes, mm -hmm. program. He told us that he was expecting to achieve the board level agreement in March. That is tomorrow, mm. till thirty first March. So we are patiently waiting. We are patiently waiting. So, at what point would you go to the president and say time we is up? To go to, but the president must invite us. The president must summon us. We are his MPs. It is the first time, though, that we saw something like the type that you did. Hasn't there been a backlash that you be so bold, sitting, I mean, sitting government MPs, call a press conference on the first day of the House's resumption and say that we want our finance minister out? That is notoriously bold, isn't it? Well, but did you listen to a press conference? Yes, I listened to you, Paul. We were away for two and a half months yes. in the constituency. Yes. And those views that were demonstrated that morning on 
on our television stations and radio networks were views that were being ferried from our constituencies, respective constituencies. Who has paid you people money to go and make dirty kind of reata, as we are hearing, uh, that one of your own? But, but look, look at me. Am I bribable? Well, I don't know. No, I'm asking you. I mean, you, you as a person you or think, you as an MP? You think me. That, but that's a view out there that you yes. people are doing the bidding of one of your own. Well, At my age, now, and my experience now in life, to be doing the bidding of anybody. Yes. At my age, and still as a life now. Because I've never done it, even for my younger days. Now I'm my classmates. It's not something I do. I stick my neck out because I believe in a principle. Not because somebody is urging me to go and do something. And that, that's an insult to some of us. So you're not working as surrogates of somebody, some Engage, of engaging in a cold war? Of who? Of one of your own. As no, in but if I have supported this president to become president since 2003. Why would I stand up openly against him now? Because, because he Why? dropped you from his government, maybe? Oh. Well, if you could be present forever, we were some point to drop. It's not that. We are looking at the party's chances next year. And we feel that if care is not taken, there will be total annihilation at the polls. Precisely what happened to the in 2016 is what we are staring at. Is that how bad it is on the ground? That is how we feel. We are listening to the concerns. When you do of consultancy surgery and people come to you, the con these are the kind of concerns they are raising. That all is not well. And these are strongholds. If you don't speak up, prosperity will judge us. At least there's a press conference that a certain group of MPs did not agree with the president's decision on kind of rata. If the president wants to keep him there, at least prosperity will judge me. You were so angry at that time, and I remember interviewing you on Eyewitness I News, well. and I said to you that you are going to meet the president. If he makes you an offer in monetary terms, would you let the campaign go? You said to me, does, no way. Why does everything then, revolve around money? Well, then you went, to the, you went to the big house, and you returned the following day singing a different song. No, no. You see, fortunately, we live in a culture where, rightly or wrongly, where if you meet an elderly person, that is the president, and he's our president, we campaign to make him president. He says to you, look, you know what? I've heard your appeal. I've heard you loud and clear. But there are one, two, three things. And even together, if you mention two, the round of IMF negotiations, and the budget. It was then at that juncture that Honorable Jamie Sabunsu intervened and added the appropriation bill for the Court of Standing Orders, mm -hmm. where we'll moves the budget motion by the same person, moving the appropriation. the appropriation bill. So when we do that, when these three things are done, the President will represent the matter. You understand? Yes, of course, he's our President. So you listen to him as an elder? Yes, because we do want a situation where it's like, we're on head on confrontation with him. You, yes. you said you wanted Ken of Riata out. Just and, me. A, I'm, not you. I mean, you. I'm, what I'm, I'm using you as a plural okay, word sure. now. The NDC jumped on the fray and said, yes, let's remove him. They brought a vote of censure. You sell out NPP MPs decided not to. If you really wanted a guy out and you've got a way out, why didn't you support that way out? See, I have a difficulty with that position. The difficulty I have is quite simple. We were pursuing a political solution. Mm -hmm. The NDC was pursuing a constitutional position. Mm -hmm. You understand? And if you come to the House of Parliament where everything is captured in the hazard, and you start making all these vacuous allegations that the foreign account has not been here, money has been transferred there, Things that you cannot prove on the face of it. You are effectively telling us, the majority side, that we are criminals. Right? Yes. I gave you the reasons why some of us 
are pushing for the removal of Ken Fuerta. Mm -hmm. Then I gave you policies. You understand? I mentioned two key policies to you. I did not talk about things in the abstract. Who is difficult to prove? In the tree language, you have a saying that says, Pam no, cha no, I don't know how no, it ends. No, no, no. Is not, all, he, what matters is that he's out. No, no, he's Ken not, must go. No. Or, the, or Ken must not go with some conditions. He must go no, with some conditions. No. If the essential vote had focused on the things that he had said himself on the floor of the house, you would have supported yes, it. Yes, well, that's his hazard. Right? But why should we allow the NDC to kick out our finance minister? When we can do it ourselves, when we can make our But, but you, you failed. You and your president failed, so they were helping no, you. No, no. I don't think we failed. I think when you say so, uh, sometimes... He's still not out. He's, he's still not out. No, he's Parliament out has even gone on recess and back. That he came here a week or two ago and mentioned the BLA. He's still working on it. Are you sure he'll really be out before 2024? Well, we continue to make our appeals to the president. And our class, uh, we are keeping our cars close to our chest. We've heard that you plan to boycott the State of the Nation address when Is the he, president he, comes he, as part of... Well, I don't, know, Is that true? I don't know what you're talking about. But was uh, no such thing have been has been discussed, but uh, the politics is full of intrigues, and when somebody tells you this is that, this is that, I don't know. But that that's not the position you're taking. I don't know if you were the one who made this condition, but there was one of your members who insisted that if the president removed Ken, you wanted an MP to become finance minister. I don't know if it was you or maybe one of your well, colleagues. Just, uh, it, was a it was part of the plan. Yes. Now he has elevated one of your own to become a Minister of State at the Ministry is of Finance. Is it not the same? It's a heave down. It's not a heave up. Explain that. Yeah, there's a minister, Confortia is a Minister of Finance in Yana. And now you have a Minister yeah, of State. Of Atlanta. It is a nomenclature. Yes. And then the Confortia is to remain the Finance Minister of Yana. But at least you have an MP who is a Minister. You have, so you have three MPs at the Ministry. That's enough, isn't it? Mohammed. I mean, Adam is a minister of state designate for the finance ministry. That doesn't make him a minister of finance. Kilovreta is the minister of finance. Just by way of side comment, do you think it was necessary to make ministers of state at the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Local Government, two of your colleagues, Obi Amwa and I mean Anta, have been promoted? Presidential prerogative, so I have to ask the president next time. No, what, what do you think? It's not for me to comment on this. No, I said it's presidential prerogative. Oh, presidential prerogative when means he would have appointed me or something he told me mm -hmm. in confidence. When he did not reappoint me, he didn't call me to tell me why he has not reappointed me. So that is his decision. <laughs> you understand? But he appointed Ken, that is his prerogative. You are challenging uh, that prerogative. No, but, but, yes, the fact, you see. So you should have a view on this prerogative too. To the, party. the president is not an independent candidate who became president. The party made him president. You understand? So the party members have every right to voice out or to ventilate views that do not sit in accord with the entire party. It's nothing personal against the president. If it could have been, it could have been any other person like Kenneth Rata. If I would say one of the ministers or the finance minister would have been the same tune, this situation is unfortunate because he is the cousin of the president. The, the situation in the country was getting worse by the day. The complaints were getting out of hand. The hardship and told hardship and all that. And even the president has admitted that there's hardship in the country. The, and there's no ruling Ghana from outside the borders of Ghana. He's right that said all this. The action you took, a very audacious one. Do you not think the system will go after you in Subin and remove you? you? Well, which system? The, 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 the current system that you are fighting by asking. I'm not fighting any system. I'm just voicing up a principled. Position. Are you not worried that what about what? That, that system would come no, after you in your constituency? No, but I, I, I'm speaking, I have the mandate of the people to speak. I'm not speaking as Eugene Wachenji. I'm speaking as a member of parliament for the people of Sudan. But, so there's no system that can come after me. But you can be uprooted. Nobody can uprooted. Through, through machinations so of government. I'm also there with I'm also, I also have my own machinations. Where's come to where's what they can use is money. Apart from that, what? Then they'll remove you. Oh, we shall see. It's not a word that you can remove. So sometimes I don't give credence to these things. But is it happening though? Nothing is happening. My no, is very intense. No one has threatened you politically. I'm, I'm there. I'm still somebody. But I'm, I'm telling you, nobody, they all know me. Nobody can scare me. 
by such empty threats. Nobody. Let's talk about your flag bearership, the man who replaces Nanado and Kwaku. How, how easy is it going to be for whoever replaces Nanado as well? Nanado Kufu has been, Kufu has been uh, the flag bearer of this party since 22nd of December 2000, 2007. Mm -hmm. 2007 is now about 15 years. 15 years. From the longest serving political leader of our tradition. And he had tried since 97. No, no, forget about that. I'm mm -hmm. sure when, when he won. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, when he won to become leader. And he's been a president for two terms. So it's not going to be easy. So the, party, the party is looking forward to our next leader. And I'm sure that that leader will also need Bernardo and his achievements to campaign on in 2024. But as I, I keep saying, that all these shenanigans are going on. You've seen it all before. I've followed the Kufuara since 2007. All these happenings, I've seen it. We have about 200,000 delegates. For the second, no, for the third time, we, we are the first time we used this structure was in 2010, after the expansion of the college, of the college at uh, Clifford in 2009. The second time we used it was in 2014. So this third time we will put it to a test. And I, well, I mean, for records, I'm one of the first parties of this expansion bill. And I believe that 200 or 1,000 people will be selected on this flag bearer. 94% of them are, are, are the police station executives. You know, it's not like the MPs. And then when the time comes, they don't make, do make their voices loud and clear. All these uptakes going on, what have you, the party will speak like he spoke in 2007 from Nanadu this is face to face on City TV. The Honorable Eugene uh, Entry just spoke in parables. When we come back, I'll ask him to explain and break that down for us. Please stay. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free-to-air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. You're yeah, welcome back. This is Face to Face on City TV. You say that over. What? What percentage? Two hundred thousand. Yes. What percentage of that? Ninety-four percent. Is still intact. Yes, the delegates. About, about one hundred ninety-four thousand. What are you trying to say? So you are saying that the delegates from two thousand seven so are still see, there. When people see appointees following this or MPs following that, it's good for the test. But the real test is for the delegates. But they all have to go around and speak to the delegates. For, for the sake of clarity. On whose side are you in this campaign? Your colleague Joe Gatte is running. Your colleague Kennedy Japan is running. Kabna Japan, I don't know what your relationship the with him is running. The principles that made me support Jay Kufuor in 1998, mm -hmm. made me support Kufuor in 2007. I've not departed on those principles. What principle is that? Yenimu Fretiti or Ubrini? The same principles. So we are the proper custodians of the values of this tradition. And I mean, my face is my vote. So your, your, your view is that this is Alan Chairman instead? I told you that the same person that made me support Kufu in 2000, 1998, moving to Kufu in 2007, I still stand by those principles today. And that principle is that it should be Alan Stern. Is that the principle? If that's the conclusion you are drawing, then you're not far off. So you support Alan Chermonti's bid? I said if you have a conclusion you are drawing, then you are not far off. There's a view that Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia, your economic whiskey that you sold to us in 28, in 2012, in 2016, before we accepted as Ghanaians, is a man who is going to fix our economic mess. Do you not think that that's someone you should put in charge of you see, your... That's your why I'm, I'm trying not to mention names. Mm. You see, so, you see, they're all fine gentlemen. You understand? But I, my view is that the same principles that guided me to support Kufu in 1980 to Sunyane. Mm -hmm. I was even his full agent on that day at Legon. 
for the 2nd of December, the election sort of went into the 23rd or so. So there was also the date on Sunday, more early, early hours of Sunday. I still stand by those principles. That is a conservative party. Even at the constitutional level, the same principles apply. The party has outgrown this conservative thing that you're talking about. Well, those who have outgrown it, we see. So it's a matter of pragmatism and conservatism. So we will we see which one will prevail. You don't want to be pragmatic? Pragmatic in what sense? You said is a... I know my party. The party... In I'm sure I the said, party has not changed. Maybe that vote has since... The I said, mm -hmm. I know it. That is the party that celebrates Dr. Mahmoud of Baumia. But who is not... Well, we're not talking... comparing the others. You just rightly mentioned there are about nine other candidates. Yes. And when I said I'm going to stay by the principles, you forgot to mention that Dr. Mahmoud Abdul's name. Why you have been around a long time? So why why do you then But I do know that you are not supporting Dr. Mahmoud Abdul's name. Because, <laughs> because, because it's, it's, even, even though he's from, uh, what's the name of his constituency? <laughs> Akumada. <laughs> you, are not, you are not supporting him. No, I know no. I know you are going for Alan Chairman. No, and that's why no, I want I you to be, that's principle. why I want you to speak to my viewers in the face I still and say to them I understand what I'm saying you see what that is forcing me your viewers understand but no no they don't I said the same principle mm. the same virtues yes on which I stood mm -hmm. in 98 for J.A. Mm -hmm. from an Afghan in 2007 mm -hmm. I've not from so that's continuity then so if President Akufado blesses, I'll, I'll leave the I'll leave the semantics. To if you. President Akufado blesses his running mate as his flag, his vice president as the next flag bearer, that's continuity. But, but I, don't, I don't think I don't think that he can openly do that. He could do it Saturday. Would you agree? Well, Saturday, yes. Saturday, then nobody knows. If he does, well, there are people you call that would probably yes, but. You just come out and say, I openly endorse one. If he calls you and tells you that he wants... Oh, he won't do it. He knows you too well. He won't even invite the you. The president knows me too well. What is needed in your next flag bearer? Somebody capable of beating John Mahama. Simple. I just want to elect a flag bearer. We want a presidential material capable of beating John Mahama. Because to get John Mahama back in is a tough fill out for the MPP. Somebody who... Was massacred over a million votes, right? Ah. I mean, he want... should have no way back in. So, what should this candidate possess? What is that about Manga that we haven't seen? And they, they really need to come back in a likely event. It's going to be the worst. <laughs> what, what should be in your candidate that should be able to beat him? A candidate that cuts across the political a candidate that uh, will appeal to the floating voter, a candidate that will be able to. You see, it's about leadership. It's about assertiveness. It's about confidence. It's about knowing the tradition way in, in and out. This is what we are talking about. This is the qualities we see in a GP leader. You see, and these were the very reasons why uh, the, the, the other candidates, like uh, like I said, of former president of now president of were supported by some of us. Should that person have been a member of parliament before so that he has a constituency at least in parliament? Well, you have a point because uh, I think from Dr. Buzia's days, every leader, apart from Safur, apart from uh, Edubo, all of mm. them have been members of parliament. Mm. Buzia was a member of parliament. Kofo. Kofo. Vitoussou was a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kofo was a member of parliament. And I was a know. member of parliament. Mm. So, but uh, looking at the field now, <laughs> you don't think we that. Only have Honorable Kennedy, who is a member of parliament. No, you also have your friend Joe Gatti. And, well, and, your, for, and, in and your former MP for in the Ashanti region, what's the name? Uh, Adenimo. Adenimo, Adenimo France, Mampon. Yes, he's also a former MP. He's also a former MP. But, the same, I said but you don't think that the. It's they, not what I think. They have, the mood of the party. It's not what I think. The mood of the party now is what? And I'm telling you that. That mood will speak on that faithful day. If the issue of corruption and economy comes up in the elections of 2024, as you are predicting, who do you think is the best person who can who can be untouched when it comes to that for you? The person who will become the NDP flag bearer. And who would that be? That person, the, 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 the person that I've outlined, I've outlined is very chosen. You have been, you have been, you have been, you have been speaking to a man of straw. I want you to put flesh on him. So that we can see, it's like the thing they put in farms to scare birds, scare crew. Umaru. Yes. I think I've become a very senior member in this party. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've said at all levels. 
I've been a branch secretary in the United Kingdom. I've been a national council member, and I'm now an MP, and I'm like an MP positive minister. So I'm a senior member in this party, and I feel the mood of the party. The mood of the party is that the the virtues that I've outlined earlier will prevail on that fateful day. When do you think your new flag bearer should be elected? Uh, well, not like uh, I've got a constitution here, mm -hmm. and it's very clear. You see, I don't want us to be doing this guesswork. When the constitution of the MPP is the guiding book for all our elections and all our activities, and it says clearly, Article 13, no one can capture it. No, you can read it. You read it. Sure. Sorry. Mm. Article 13 of the MPP constitution, that's page 54, depending on which constitution you are holding, says clearly, and I'll, I will quote about four of the five, four of the nine clauses. Is it mine? No, four of the twelve clauses for the purpose of this interview. Okay. Election of presidential candidates. It says the election of the party's presidential candidate shall be held not later than 24 months from the date of the national election. So we are late. We are already late. The date and venue for the election shall be decided by the National Council. Provided, however, that the National Council may on appropriate occasion vary the date. Then it goes on to see the two. It says, no later than six months prior to the holding of the election, the General Secretary shall give notice, inviting applications from members for nomination as the party's candidate to contest for the office of President of the Republic. The notice shall be displayed in a conspicuous place in the party's constituency, regional and national offices, and shall specify the closing date for application, which shall now be more than five months to the This is a kid yet. Mm -hmm. When the party is in government, the election of a presidential candidate shall be held not later than 11 months. Not later than 11 months before the elections. Yes. What, how many months do we have now? We have a lot of months now. Yes. I'll come to that. Okay. Before the general election. Mm -hmm. Notice inviting evidence from members from this as the party's president shall be given three months prior to the hold of National Congress mm -hmm. or shall close after two months. Okay. This is where common sense must prevail. Okay. Not the law anymore. The law is there. Mm -hmm. But the common sense is what I'm going to say. Because you see, you've done it first in 2007, mm -hmm. where the Nauru Dankwa was elected on the 22nd of December 2007. That was the last weekend before Christmas. In the new year, the then presidential candidate, Nauru Dankwa Bufuado, was meeting the losing aspirants. And to convince them to join the ship and, you know, make the party win. You know that he was still in the throes of selecting his running mate. Or a few names that he sort of brought. People opposed it. So the party finally settled on Dr. Balmea. I think we made the way through 2008. And Dr. Balmea was finally outdoor the second day. I think in August. Whilst we were just going through all this, you know, where is A, is B, John Muhammad and Professor Mills has split up the country into two. Busily, busily. in the best of health. Mm -hmm. So he was doing the entire Accra Central, Western, then probably East Thing come to rest in Accra. Muhammad was touching base. In the north. In the, well, the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. So I saw him in Kumasi a few times. In the end, what happened? You lost. You lost. By some twenty, forty thousand votes. In in and must not be oblivious to is that the more seats you win in Parliament the presidency falls as a bonus. Win Parliament first and the Jubilee House shall be given to you. We, right. need, we, need, we, need, we need to go. Let me, let me finish. Yes, please. This. Yes, please. So, in hindsight, we set up, we rise end of July, August, September, 
basically there won't be much we are on, on recess do it then let's hold the two primaries concurrently like what the NDC is about to do get our flag bearer get the parliamentary candidates but when we come back in October there's going to be a Commonwealth Parliamentary Association event here in Yana. and then in November budget same November we retire to committees to do the study the budget yeah. we go back to plenary to debate and then do the appropriation that takes you to a few days before Christmas so that time is purely government business excuse me so the two months available to us now realistically is July uh, August August and September and how early is August is four months away from December September is three months away from December when you elect this, this uh, uh, candidate the candidate would then have up to three months to sit and also still a selected running mate so new year you yeah, you're starting with a new team when are you going to tell me in the face who you are going to support or who you are supporting in this race? I think I've told you. No, you haven't mentioned the name. I've told you. You, I are, you are just scratching. No, I want a name out scratching. of your I want a name out of your mouth. I've told you. Everybody watching knows. Mention the name. Does the name start with A or B? <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not, don't, don't get me there. Let's leave it here. Thank you so much. It's been great speaking to you. Likewise. That's the noble Eugene Bwachentri, MP for Subin, former Likewise. Deputy Minister for Works and Housing. My name is Umaru Sanda. I want to thank you for watching Face to Face on City TV. We'll be back again with more. Please stay. Is it with pig feet? <laughs> Ghana is a country that's full of historical antecedents and rich cultural heritage. What is a rich cultural heritage without soul food? And what is soul food without a touch of ethnicity? And what is ethnicity if it's not from your village? The season of all things Ghanaian is upon us, and we are here to celebrate an aspect of our Ghanaianness with the Back to Your Village Food Bazaar. Happening live from the 25th to the 26th of March. March 2023 at the forecourt of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. Come, let's treat ourselves to delectable, authentic Ghanaian cuisine from the northern, the middle, and the southern zones of the country that reflect our true cultural diversity. While at it, we'll be jamming to genuine Ghanaian music amidst games, competitions, storytelling, and so much more. Interested vendors of indigenous foods are invited to register. Don't let this be another missed opportunity. Call 0205-973-973 to book a stand and be part of the Back to Your Village Food Bazaar 2023. Anya Mime, the country make hotel. So come, let's enjoy some good food, resounding music, heartfelt camaraderie, and remind ourselves why Ghana is still our home at the Back to Your Village Food Bazaar on the 25th and the 26th of March 2023 at the forecourt of the AMA from 8 a.m. each day. The Back to Your Village Food Bazaar is powered by City TV with support from City FM and is sponsored by Voltic Gun Limited and Malta Guinness. with some really, really tough moments. He's faced heartbreaking moments on and off the pitch. Uh, to become a football player, I did a lot of, lot of, lot of sacrifice.